Hi, this is a tutorial series where I teach you how to make a puzzle game that uses the camera. This whole project is done using only vanilla JavaScript and HTML canvas. And a small part of it, this one here, is done using PHP and MySQL to save and load scores from the database. The game works on desktop computers, but also on mobile devices like phones and tablets. By following this series, you'll learn many useful things that you can later apply in other projects. In the last video, we implemented a way to drag and drop the puzzle pieces generated from the camera image. Today, we'll continue with part four in the series, how to add gameplay elements into the app. We'll implement how to start the game, count the time, and check if the game is completed. Let's begin. We continue with the code from last time. Let me just put Mr. Chibisan here again. Next, we add gameplay elements like the menu and showing the elapsed time. We need to define some more structure in the HTML page, a div that will contain all these new elements, a div for the menu and a div for showing the time. The menu will contain a select component for setting the difficulty. There will be four different options, and when the user changes these, we will call a function called setDifficulty, which we'll need to define in JavaScript. We also need the button here to start the game. Pressing it will call a function called restart that we'll also need to define in JavaScript. So let's move to the JavaScript file next. We add two new global variables to keep track of the start and end time. We then implement the set difficulty function. First, we get the value of the select component we defined in HTML. Based on that, we call the initialize pieces function with a different number of rows and columns. I'm using a switch case structure here to avoid many if else statements. It's a common mistake my students make. The values I use here are just guesses pretty much. But for the insane variant, I wanted to have exactly 1000 pieces. So I use 40 and 25, which has the most square aspect ratio. Then the restart function will set the start time variable to the current timestamp. And the end time is set to null because we just started playing. We also randomize the pieces at this stage. If I refresh, we don't see the menu anywhere. Actually, it flashes rapidly before the page loads, but where does it go? We can use the developer tools to inspect the elements and see that they are pushed below the bottom of the page by the canvas. We can actually try out different styles here to get it to work. Setting an absolute positioning with the zero top will do the trick for now. So I will add this to our CSS file. Refreshing now, it works. I can press start and it will randomize the pieces each time. And if I change the difficulty level, we see the different sized grids coming up. I thought the insane mode would be too processor intensive at first, but it works fine on my computer at least. I'm sure some devices will struggle though. Are you getting something out of this? Let me know in the comments if you've built something like this before, or if this is your first time. Next, we display the time. I will define a function called updateTime that first takes the current time from the system. Then, it takes the div we defined earlier to hold this value and sets the inner HTML to the difference between now and the start time. We need to call this function somewhere. 
So I will go to the update canvas function that is called on every frame and enter it here. We also notice that this name is not proper anymore because now we update more than just the canvas here. So I will refactor it a bit. When I refresh now, I press start and it shows the time here. But it's in milliseconds and we should format it properly. I'll first convert it to seconds by keeping the integer part of the milliseconds when dividing by 1000. Then I want to consider this format. So we need to know the seconds part between 0 and 59 and we will get it like this. The minute part also between 0 and 59 can be obtained like this. And the hour part is between 0 and 23, and we get it like this. I doubt anybody will spend more than a day playing this. Then, to format them into the final string, I take each component and do a left padding with 0 if necessary. I use a column between each part. Then we return this final value and that's it. Now we can use it here to format the difference. Starts to feel like a real game already, don't you think? But nothing happens when we're done. We need to detect somehow that all pieces are in the correct locations. We do that by adding an attribute here that will say if the location is correct or not. Initially it should be, because the pieces are defined at the correct location. But then, when we randomize, we immediately set it to false. Then, when a piece is snapped to the correct location, we set it to true again. It's possible that someone grabs a piece from the correct location. So we need to set it back to false here on mouse down. Then to check if all the pieces are correct, we write a function like this. It goes through all pieces. And if even one of them is not correct, the function returns false. Otherwise, we return true. We check this in the mouse up callback function because the game can only be completed when the player releases a piece, the last piece that goes in the correct location. Here, we also need to check if the end time is null, because, in principle, the player can continue to move pieces around after the game is over, and we don't want to update the time anymore after that. We just set the end time here to the current time. We also need to change the display here, so that if an end time is available, the difference to that is shown, and not the difference to the current time. Ok, let's see now. Timer starts counting, same as before. We play the game. And now the timer stopped. Ok, that's it for today. Please like and share this video if you know somebody interested. In the next part, I'll teach you how to make the game look nicer by adding some styles and visual components. See you guys!